Good morning, a very warm welcome to Christchurch for this service of morning prayer. If you'd like to follow the readings and the prayers, these can be found on the Church of England's daily prayer app. We keep a moment of stillness as we begin. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalms 17 and 19, with a prayerful pause at the Red Diamond. Hear my just cause, O God, consider my complaint. Listen to my prayer, which comes not from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes behold what is right. Weigh my heart, examine me by night. Refine me, and you will find no impurity in me. My mouth does not trespass for earthly rewards. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast in the ways of your commandments. My feet have not stumbled in your paths. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and listen to my words. Show me your marvellous loving kindness. O Saviour of those who take refuge in your right hand from those who will rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me. From my enemies who surround me to take away my life. They have closed their heart to pity. And their mouth speaks proud words. They press me hard, they surround me on every side, watching how they may cast me to the ground. Like a lion that is greedy for its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, Lord, confront them and cast them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand from those whose portion in life is unending, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to their little ones. As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness. When I awake and behold your likeness, I shall be satisfied. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that goes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, 
and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The first reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 13. The Philistines mustered to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and troops like the sand on the seashore in multitude. They came up and encamped at Michmash, to the east of beth -Aben. When the Israelites saw that they were in distress, for the troops were hard-pressed, the people hid themselves in caves and holes and rocks and tombs and cisterns. Some Hebrews crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gil Gilead. Saul was still at Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. He waited for seven days, the time appointed by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people began to slip away from Saul. So Saul said, bring the burnt offering to me here, and the offerings of well-being. And he offered the burnt offering. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to meet him and salute him. Samuel said, what have you done? Saul replied, when I saw that the people were slipping away from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines were mustering at Michmash, I said, Now the Philistines will come down upon me at Gilgal, and I have not entreated the favour of the Lord. So I forced myself, and offered the burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. The Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom will not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him to be ruler over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And Samuel left and went on his way from Gilgal. The rest of the people followed Saul to join the army. They went up from Gilgal towards Gibeah of Benjamin. Saul counted the people who were present with him, about 600 men. Saul, his son Jonathan, and the people who were present with them stayed in Geba of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped at Michmash. And raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned towards Ophrah in the land of Shua, Another company turned towards Beth Horon, and another company turned towards the mountain that looks down from the valley of Zeboim towards the wilderness. Here ends the reading. The Canticle Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, 
the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. The second reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. He said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. The Responsory Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Zechariah's song, the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Continue in prayer. Gracious God, most of our readings focus on the value of truth, of honesty in our words. We pray for all who find themselves slandered or bullied. Those who are not believed when they speak the truth. We pray for the work of the police and the criminal justice system. For those involved in family courts Remember the work of journalists and others who seek the truth, that their vision would be clear and that the scourge of fake news would be ended.
as we remember Saul's lack of trust. We pray for all who find it hard to trust in you today. Especially for those for whom the recent pandemic has shaken their faith and their confidence in your goodness. as we wrestle with doubt and darkness to be mindful of your presence with us and each Friday we remember Christ enthroned on the cross and we remember all whose lives of service model his own Today especially we remember the life of St Ignatius de Loyola for his insight into prayer and his contribution to the spiritual life. We pray for all who put their faith into action, especially those in government and in authority. And in a moment of stillness, we offer to God our own needs and concerns, our hopes and our fears for ourselves, for families and neighbours. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.